I don't know if this was in the promotion, Steve Versnick, but did you know it was singles night at Tropicana Field, the, the Rays and the Yankees? <laughs> were there lots of ladies out there? I didn't, I didn't notice. Well, well, there might have been, but there were only singles on the field. In fact, the Rays had 10 of them. They, uh, man, you talk about leaving men on. I mean, 12 altogether, one shy of the most this year, but they got in four straight innings, they got at least two base runners on. They lose two to one to the Yankees. There's your, your nut graph, if you will. Um, and it was two to one for the longest time, but 10 hits, five walks, one hit batter, 16 base runners, and they score a grand total of one run. They left 12 runners on base. Ugh. Yeah, and in the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth inning, they had two runners on. I mean, you just needed and, one to tie, and right? They got like one you, run in the fifth, and that was it. Yeah, just get one more across, and at least you're playing the you know ridiculous uh, Kansas City tiebreaker or whatever they call that by putting the guy on second base. But it it just, I mean, against a Yankees team that you really need to win. You know, this is the thing, and they can still win the series. Mm-hmm. And they had won five series in a row until they went to Texas and got swept. Then they win the first game of this series. Now it's tied 1-1. Of course, they're going to play the Yankees um, after the series that they have coming up with the Guardians. But it, we talked about this. Like, at some point, you're going to have to sweep one of these, right? You're going to have to gain some ground. Now they're two games under 500 again. In a couple of days, they might be back to 500 again. Where do you think they're going to finish? Just around 500. Um, if they're if they're able to, to withstand this. But... Goodness gracious, as uh, your friend Susan Waldman probably said to you a few times. Um, you had a chance to talk to her? Was she she was over there, right? Yeah, we talked to her a little bit before the game. So Love Susan. Oh, she's great. She's She is a – you talk about a pioneer. Oh, the in, best. In anything but broadcasting. Mm-hmm. And, and some of the, the crap she's gone through over the years. Oh, God. Yeah. And, you know, and, and she's still – herself and great and Mm -hmm. you know i I don't know if they'll ever recreate her and john together right been wonderful i mean you know they may not be everyone's cup of tea but they're new york they definitely were new york and And she's still that's that's what you want out of a hometown broadcast yeah like the non-new yorker me i don't have to be a fan of it right you know i mean that's that's what that's what local broadcasts are supposed to be like it you know a little bit of Homer it radio. It doesn't matter that everybody else doesn't like your announcers. It's, you what, is your, what does your community think of it? That's right. You know? Yeah, so all the corny nicknames with John yeah. Sterling that we made fun mm-hmm. of, you know, here comes the judge, all rise, and all that. Mm-hmm. They loved it. They, yeah. It was beloved, right, with her and him and Susan. Well, well Susan, what do you think? Every oh. deep playoff run, Dave Mishkin gets made fun of in the New York media and others for his goal That's calls right. and stuff. That's and, right. You know, who cares what New York thinks of him? Yeah, I mean, you know, he can yell Rays win all he wants to. They're going to hate it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, when, when Dave's yelling goal and, and you know, That's right. in the way he does. Everybody's like, that's know. so stupid. No, we yeah. love it. <laughs> every time, every time you know, the the Lightning play, the Rangers or Islanders in a playoff, they, the York Radio will start playing his goal calls and make fun of it. Right. And, you know, but who cares? Like, And he doesn't yell goal. He yells, score, score, or whatever. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, they're they're yours. They're, that's what local radio and play by play is all about. But um, but man, they didn't have much to talk about as far as uh, the scoring went for the race. And this has been the thing all year. Like, you know, I I still believe in my heart of hearts that they're not going to win enough games by the trade deadline that that they're to prevent them from trading players. And you know, the phone's going to ring. I think Zach Jack Eflin, who's pitching well. He, he pitched, pitched well. well tonight. Yeah, he pitched very well. Um, obviously, giving up just the two runs, but you know I, they're going to have to. They're going to probably deal some of those guys just simply because um, it makes sense to do so. And it would be still, you know, with Shane Boz coming back with with some of the performances they've gotten from some of the young guys. You know, um, I still think that they'd be dealing from strength a little bit, right, and trying to you know, trying to replenish their farm system or, or whatever they mm-hmm. get back for these guys. But um, it just, it doesn't feel like it's going to happen, <laughs> you know. And every time they make this run and they get around 500 again or get above it by a game or so, then then they kind of slink back. And these, these are huge games. And the Yankees aren't playing well. You know, this is the thing. You, you've got a team that's, you know, had won five out of the previous 20 when they came in here or something like that. 
and now you could make them whole again and get them thinking that they're coming out of it. Um, but you got a chance to kick them. I mean, they scored two runs. You well, should so I said, beat, you held them to two runs. You got to beat the Yankees if you hold them to two runs. You have mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. You know? It doesn't and you got the pitching performance from Eflin that you got. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got exactly what you wanted from your ace or your staff. And for whatever reason, you couldn't get the big hit. And um, you couldn't drive the ball. It, it's been the story all season. Right. Right. Like singles are fine, except you at some point you need to take some extra bases. You need to put some over the wall. You you know, Paredes came close. He did. You know, hit it to left center instead of left. Yeah. But they just they don't they don't drive the ball enough. Yeah, and he's about the only one. And and I'm sorry, but like one of the biggest fails of the season and a big reason why they are where they are is Randy Rosarena cannot be Randy Rosarena, especially with you talk about the long ball. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you want to bat two hundred, you want to hit one eighty five or something like that. Give me an occasional home run, man. You know? He he just doesn't show the power that he's had, which he had to all fields prior to this year, or so it seemed. And and he came up in situations with men on base and just didn't do anything, you know. And and you those guys. And by the way, I didn't even realize this because I haven't been watching the Rays as much lately because um, I was away in North Carolina and different things. What the hell's happened to Josh Lowe? Yeah, he's in a funk right now. Oh my yeah, god. He's as lost as any guy they have at the in the lineup. I mean, when you look at their lineup, Rosarena is batting two hundred three, right? Series batting two hundred three. Mm-hmm. Lowe's batting two hundred seven. Mm-hmm. Brendan Lyle's batting two thirty three. Yeah, like this is their lineup. Yeah, and those are the good hitters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are the guys that they were counting on. The, the best hitter on the t- the best hitters on the team are Ahmad Rosario and Ben Rortvet. Two dudes that weren't here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Ben Ben's getting hits to the middle of the field. He's actually the last mm-hmm. month hit about three twenty or something. Yeah, he's um, up to two eighty one. Was two for four tonight. Well, he was pulled for a pinch runner. Yeah, no, he's he's doing the job. So the new guys that that you weren't counting on have come in here and mm-hmm. had better years. But the ones you were, and this is not you know we're at the all star break, man. You know, like you are what you are at this point as a team, I believe. And and unless you're going to be a buyer, you know, and and fortify your lineup in some way, which they're not going to do. I don't believe, um, you're not, you're not going to get any better, you know, uh, now maybe bringing up some guys that we've talked about over and over again from triple a, the junior coming arrows and guys like that. Maybe mm-hmm. you get a, a little infusion, uh, a little excitement in your lineup, you know? Um, but short of that, I don't know that, that they're going to bring somebody in here. That's going to give them that spark. And yeah, so, I don't expect them to trade for, players a bat. to yeah. to go try to win the World Series this year. Right. I, I right. think I think the reinforcements are going to be trading some of these veterans that probably aren't going to be on your team next year so that you can make way for the young create players. opportunity for your younger players. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what I believe they'll do with the trade deadline in less than 3 yeah. weeks. And that's not giving up, that's not the white flag, it's just smart, right? It's just I mean, you'd love to see somebody want Brandon Lau, right? Mhm. Um, I don't know that it'll happen, but you'd love it. Um, well, look, the Rays believe, look, they believe they could win the World Series this year. Mm-hmm. So far as the season's played out, it's not looking that way. No. But they believe they can win it next year. And so if you're going to make moves now, this isn't about a rebuild of let's trade for a bunch of single-A prospects that'll be here in five years. That's not what they're going to do. No. Like, their moves are to make make moves if they're going to make moves it's to get some assets back but more importantly let the young guys play and see what they got right. can jonathan aranda play up here once he's healthy can right. curtis mead play up here how does junior Caminero adjust when he comes mm-hmm. up you know that's what to me if i'm eric neander coming up at the trade deadline it's i need to get these guys if, if this season is quote unquote lost I don't, they're not waving the white flag, but if you're saying, I just don't think we got it this year, let's stock up for next year, get some assets back as well for players that we don't plan on bringing back next year, whether it's Eflin, whether it's Brendan Lau, whether it's Mm -hmm. Rosario, you know, I mean, whoever the players are and and some of it will depend on the demand, you know, Mm -hmm. who, who comes calling, but 
you know, let's see, let's put Curtis Mead at third base for three straight weeks or Junior Caminero or, you know, whatever it is. Put Mead at second and Caminero at third. You know, are they going to yeah. finally call up Pinto and just see if he can make it? Right. I mean, I know he's not doing that well in, in Durham either. Yeah. You know, Alex Jackson's doing well defensively, but can't hit anything. No. You know, but to me, it's it's how do at some point you have to put young guys in and see what they can do. And you can't just put them in. You know, the problem is when Aranda's been up here or Curtis Mead's been up here. They're platoon okay, players. You play third base for a day, and then the next day you're off. And then maybe the next day you pinch hit, and then you finally get, you're in a game again. And then, you know, you're not you're not getting that consistency where it's, you know, and, and we've seen it with young players. I mean, Willie Adamas came up and played for like three or three straight weeks when he was initially called up. Yeah. Started off okay and then struggled. Yeah. But they played him pretty much for three straight weeks. And then sent him back down, and, and he went and worked on things and that. But you you got to just – at some point, put them in to see what they can do. Yeah, because the hardest job in baseball, quite frankly, and, and there's very few guys that are good at it, and the ones that are have usually been in the game for a while, mm-hmm. is that guy that plays every third day. You know, mm-hmm. that pinch hits maybe one night, and then every mm-hmm. three days he's in the lineup at second and batting eighth. Like, that's really hard to be consistent when you don't get the looks, when you don't get the mm-hmm. at-bats. And you know that, I, you know, I'm going to play tonight, and I may not play again, you know, until the weekend. Well, in particular, as a young guy, yeah, who that's is the thing. still trying to figure out the league, figure out what works up here? Can I trying work to prove up here? he can play yeah. every day? I mean, trying to prove he belongs, right? Mm-hmm. Like Joe Madden used to say, like there's a stage you go through as a young player. Mm-hmm. It's you get up there and it's like I think I belong here, right? Mm-hmm. Now I have to prove I belong here, and then it comes a point where you just forget about all that and say I belong here, you yeah. know? And 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 it and it, and to go from I think I can play here to I know I can play here is is a bigger leap than you think. And to get there, you have to have success. You have to have at bats. You need you need to to go through that struggling process, make the adjustments. There, you know, the scouting reports are everywhere before you even get here. They know exactly what your strengths and weaknesses are, mm-hmm. and believe me, they're going to exploit them. And so you have to make adjustments because you're not going to get the pitches that they know you can hit. You know and so yeah, doing that every third or fourth day, I mean, that is, that is really tough. So you're right. Um, clear the decks for some of these guys, whether it's Curtis Mead or Kim and Arrow, and just mm-hmm. let them play, let them play out the rest of the year. You know what might happen? They may turn into be phenoms, right? You just don't know if you give them, yep. you know, a hundred at bats or 200 at bats or whatever's left of the year. Um, they may, they may spark your team. Well, and, and they may they may do that this year, but this is all up to me, it's all about next, next year. season. Yeah. You know, we've agreed. talked about, you know, if, if you look ahead to next season and mm-hmm. Eric Neander's job is to look years ahead. Absolutely. And and it's still and we'll get to Wander Franco again. Yes. But it's still where Wander Franco and, and his absence and not being part of this team is screwed up their whole plan. Of course it has. I mean, he was the best prospect they've ever had. Right. And when he was up here, he was proving it too. Right, right. You know, it wasn't just the promise of it. No, um, he was the proving production it. you lost mm-hmm. was immense. So at this point, you need to know: Are these young guys? I mean, that's what they when they traded Phil Maton. It was to make room for Manuel Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. When they traded, so by the way, is really really good. Mm-hmm. And they're very high on him, and he's been yeah. dealing in Durham. 98 mile an hour yeah. fastball. I think they said he had nine appearances up here before this, and he had six of them he didn't allow a run. Yep. When they traded Aaron Savali, it was to make room for Shane Boz. Yep. Yep. You know, as Jeffrey Springs and Drew Rasmussen come back, you know, Springs is probably a couple weeks away, but he's getting close. Mm hmm. You know, barring an injury, are you going to trade a Zach Eflin to make room? Right. Not that you, you don't think Eflin's a good pitcher because he's a great pitcher. No, but he has value. He has value and a big number on his contract. A huge next contract, year. yeah. When you have seven other pitchers you think could be starters next year, mm-hmm. you know, from Pepio to Bradley to Boz to Latell to Springs to Rasmussen, and I'm right. forgetting somebody in there too. Right. Um, I know there's a seven. I'm forgetting it off the top of my head, but. You know, you've got those seven pitchers. McClanahan. McClanahan. Yeah, that's it. You know, McClanahan coming back next year. <laughs> or him. Yeah. <laughs> he hadn't been here all year. He kind of forgot. Yeah, yeah it um, is easy to forget. You know, so that's uh, – if the Rays think they can't 
win the World Series this year, then it's about next year. Because this isn't a re like we said, this isn't a rebuild of what Baltimore to go through and let's go through a bunch of hundred lost seasons. Like they think they've got prospects down, you know, from whether it's Junior Caminero, whether it's Casey Williams, you know, what and they've got others that they that they're high on. You know, some of them are lower level and, and hopefully going to get up here in a few years. But you know, that's what they're that's what they've got to figure out is, you know, which you know Josh Lowe, remember when his first year came up, struggled, went back down this, and then his second year, he had a, a much productive year. This year, he's kind of lost. Yeah. And it was hurt to start the season in that. But right, it's almost like the lack of hitting on this team just has rubbed off on everybody. You know, they always say hitting's contagious. Well, I think the lack of hitting has been contagious this year for this team. And the weird thing about this game was they 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 hit. They just, everything mm-hmm. was a single, everything. They, they, there's no power on this team. Um, and when you can't even get an extra base hit uh, here and there or, you know, uh, it's station to station is much tougher to score runs that way. But even even saying that, they left way too many runners on base and couldn't get just one knock, you know, at any point during the game. At minimum, it's tied. You're more likely going to take the lead 3-2 to two and probably win that game 3-2, to two, you know, but was not to be. And so they let the Yankees back in it, and the Yankees managed to win, and now I think they have I saw it was the Yankees' first one-run win since May 29th. That's incredible because we're used to the Rays winning one-run games all the time because mm-hmm. they play a lot of close games. They don't get the separation, Yep. whereas the Yankees usually do. And the Yankees um, stole their first base tonight since like June 14th. Yeah, they don't, they don't run much. <laughs> they don't have to. Yeah, come on, you got Juan Soto and Aaron Judge and all those guys. <laughs> uh, one guy we're not going to see this year, and uh, I don't know if they have egg on their face for this or not, uh, Steve, but Wander Franco now facing additional charges of human trafficking. Yeah, they added that on today, which could face apparently a prison sentence of up to 20 years in the Dominican. Yeah, suddenly for the for the for the really the first time it it I don't know why this I don't know. It, it's bad enough, right? Um what he's charged with is horrible and but but when you tack this on like and and obviously whatever the justice system is in the Dominican, he'll be subjected to it, but now I think not only is he gave up given up his career cuz I don't think he's ever going to play in, in baseball again. Forget about the Rays. I don't think he's going to play again, at least in the major leagues in, in the United States. Now he's looking at jail time, like real jail time, right? And because he's on uh, the commi- he's now on the reserve list, the Rays don't have to pay him, and he doesn't count yep. against their uh, their payroll, obviously. So, yeah, now that he's been charged, the Rays asked in baseball permitted granted, them to move yeah. from the administrative leave to the restricted list. Yeah. And that means, one, he's not paid, and two, he's not collecting service time. Right. He's still on the raise. He's under contract. Essentially, you're kind of suspended or whatever. Yeah. Essentially. And until... You're, you can't play. I mean, right. you're you're charged somewhere and you're... Right. Yeah. And, and baseball says they're still investigating, but they're going to let the process in the Dominican play out before they do anything as well. Right. But now it's played out to the point where he has mm-hmm. formal charges and he's not available to the raise. Mm-hmm. Because he has to stay in trial. Correct. So. And, and, and we don't, it, the timing on that too is, is I've heard different things on that. Like this could be a long time before mm-hmm. this is all settled. Yeah. This isn't going to be, you know, okay, they go to trial next month and then it'll be decided. And maybe by but, September he'll be up. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it's from what I hear, it's, it could be a long time. Yeah. And I was kidding about the egg on your face, although somebody suggested that the other day, and I would just say this. Are you kidding me? Like, how were the Rays? What team in baseball at the time when Wander Franco coming out of Cuba um, and as great of a talent as he was, and everybody knew him. I think Neil Solons has been talking about him since he was 12. Um, And that's a compliment to Neil, by the way. But there's not a team in baseball that wouldn't have wanted this guy and didn't know about him because he was such an amazing mm-hmm. prospect. You can't anticipate, I think, that somebody who's coming from any country, even even the United States, is going to have this problem, right? Like, I suffice to say, I don't think there's a team in baseball that wouldn't have taken him on when the Rays did. This is not some character no. flaw on the part of the organization. No, and even when they signed the contract, I mean, I, I don't, you know, as far as we know, the Rays had no 
absolutely no knowledge or any even inclination that no way you're not going to put that kind of money on the line for somebody if you had the slightest inkling could yep. become you know yeah, suspended because, because these contracts are guaranteed right and, and and i've heard i've heard some some people on on social media and on the radio you know saying you know well you know why the rays don't just cut them yeah well they you could, could. <laughs> but they'll owe them 180 million dollars guaranteed <laughs> Yeah. If you cut them. Yeah. Like you have to, as much as the Rays and, and you know, they, they haven't really said a lot and, and they shouldn't. And, you know, I, I, I'm guessing they'd be fine if that contract got voided at this point, assuming he's guilty of what he's charged with. Right. But, but you can't just cut him now, like, because that contract is guaranteed. And if you do it, if you cut him before all that process plays out, then you're going to owe him $180 million. Yeah. There's no way getting out of that unless you let the process play out. And then there's, depending on how the contract is and the CBA and baseball and all this other stuff, at that point, if he's violated part of the contract where then it's now voidable, mm -hmm. that's when you cut him because that's when you don't owe him the money. Right. You know, Today they, was the first step where now he's on the restricted list, so now they don't have to pay him the rest of the season. They don't have to pay him. Pay finally, him. Yeah. I shouldn't say the rest of the season. As of now, they're not paying him. Right. You know, Now, if something changes a month or two from now, well, that'll be addressed at that point. But Right. And, and this year, he was only making like $2 million, so it's not a ton. Next no. year, it's scheduled to go up to an eight, I think, or a little over eight. Right. And then it gets bigger and bigger as it goes on. I mean, the, the, the deal was structured so that – most of the money was on the back end after the, the Rays were in a new stadium, all that stuff. And, you know, he was further down the road in his career. But I, I, I'm not sure what else the Rays could do. You don't think anybody is capable of that. At least I don't. I mean, but we know people that are. Yeah. Well, we've known it in our business. I mean, we you have, know, yeah. it's always a surprise and there's no... You know, it's nothing but that. You know, unfortunately, as my good friend Herm Edwards says, what you do in the dark comes to the light. And that's what's happened with Wander Franco. But I assure you, no no professional anything uh, is going to take on somebody with that problem. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, if, if they know it exists and they simply didn't. And so, you know, now it's a whole different conversation about Wander Franco and whether or not, you know, what's left of his life. Forget about his baseball career. You know, um, this guy has put himself in peril and if he's guilty, um, he deserves it. You know, he deserves whatever punishment is coming his way. Um, but that'll be decided by whatever the Dominican judicial process is. And then he could face maybe more in the United States and certainly more from baseball. If, if they were even inclined to give him due process at that point, but they're going to let the authorities in the Dominican take care of it. Uh, Anyway, so that just another charge, which sounds horrible and is tacked on to, uh, to Wander Franco's list of charges. There's another story, and this is uh, interesting. Christy Ackert, who uh, has covered baseball her whole life and covered, uh, in fact, the New York Yankees for the Daily News, where she came to the Tampa Bay Times, uh, wrote a story about the Rays' pursuit of Aaron Judge. Uh, remember after he uh, broke Roger Maris's mm -hmm. home run record of, uh, with 62 and um, he entered the off season, you know, that year, huge free agent. And of course ends up staying in New York, but he was kind of wooed by the, the giants and the Padres and that sort of thing. But he revealed that uh, there were some different teams that he wasn't expecting. One of them being the Tampa Bay Rays and he said, you know, he didn't expect it just because they're a division rival and, you know, uh, he spent his whole career trying to go against them. But uh, according to uh, Christie, that the Rays are believed to have been willing to talk about a contract for Judge of 10 years, $300 million. And Judge said it was a very respectful offer. He appreciated they reached out to him. He thought that they thought enough of, of him to do that. And he said, you know, he really respects their team, what they built. They have a good club, but it's so hard to think about playing for them because he spent his whole career game planning against them, you know, to beat <laughs> them in the same division. Um, but interesting, and can you only imagine what an Aaron Judge will do for any franchise, but 
Well, you imagine know. if you would have, I mean, just think of this. Imagine if you had Aaron Judge and Wander Franco in that same lineup. Oh, my goodness. And then you add Yandy Diaz. And then, and and then all of a sudden, Rosa Rain is protected and, and, you know, Yandy and, yeah. What a lineup, huh? Try to yeah. navigate that every night. I mean, that bat like Aaron Judge has is what the Rays it's what they missed. Need. That's what they, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what they haven't been able to develop themselves. Correct. In the minors. And and they finally had a prospect that was a superstar, perennial all star, like not the same player as Aaron Judge, but but somebody who had that kind of an impact. And they lost him. And uh, yeah, but fascinating that uh, we've heard now the Rays pursuing you know some pretty big name free agents over the last couple of years. So, yeah, it, it's not that Stu Sternberg and Eric Neander and them won't spend money, right? But they're they're they obviously run a, a cheaper payroll than teams like the Dodgers and Yankees and of course Red Sox and Astros. So their revenues and, are and Braves, yeah, considerably less. But it's not. I mean, this year what their payroll is ninety five, ninety six million, hundred million dollars. Yeah, it's not that they won't spend money. No. Now, if if you don't think they're spending enough, that's a fair assessment. Although you don't know their books, I don't. You know, I don't know yeah. how much money they're making. If you don't think they spend it wisely, that's another argument. Okay, sure. But it's not like, you know, they're not the cheapest team in baseball right now. And they haven't been for years. I mean, they're the bottom third, but. Sure. But there's a lot of teams spending less than them. Right. Six, five, six, seven teams. I haven't looked this year specifically, but. Mm -hmm. And as they get closer to the new stadium, you see them ramping up spending. Yeah. And I think that'll be the plan. I mean, I think mm -hmm. that as as the revenues are there, um, they're going to want to first and foremost field a really good team for that new stadium, and then they'll have the revenue streams hopefully to uh, for a bigger payroll. But that was I thought that was a uh, a good story, interesting story by uh, Christy Ackert, who I know uh, has a very good relationship with Aaron Judge. I've not heard that before she wrote it, so um, that's a a pretty good pretty good scoop yep. by hers. Hey, the all-star break mercifully is coming. And I just want to say it's not enough that Isak Paredes is going. And you know what? Maybe some other guys belong there as well, you know. But having said that, there is another all-star for the race. There is. I know yeah. they're sending two. I don't know if you knew that or not. I mean, you did. I just but. thought it was Isak. But apparently, and Lord knows they spent enough time in the broadcast – on ball boy Braden Coles. That's right. The ball boy, who is usually stationed down the right field line in the Rays' bullpen. Mm -hmm. um, if you recall, not so many weeks ago. Actually, it was back on March 30th. Yeah, well, that was a lot of weeks ago, actually, now that I think about the it. First but, weekend. Uh, he, he made a uh, a diving stop uh, of a, a, a ball hit foul, you know, down towards the bullpen. And... He was interviewed and and it kind of went viral, and so yeah, it was it was a March thirtieth game against the Blue Jays, as a matter of fact. So it earned a spot on Sports Center's top ten, and Jason Adam, you know, was interviewed about it, and they did a lot of stuff on on the broadcast. And since then, you know, it's kind of blown up. Um, and I'll be damned that that game was only his third ever as a raised clubhouse attendant, right? And now he's been voted as a clubhouse attendant to, to go to the All-Star game. He is. Which, There's, uh, I think, uh, another uh, ball boy from, I think, the Orioles or something. The Orioles have one, yeah. yeah. Yep. They're the two going to the All-Star. He's actually going to be there girl. starting. I don't, I don't know yeah. whether it is. Yeah. He's going to be there starting Saturday, I believe. So he's going to be there for the Futures game and then the Home Run Derby and the All-Star game and – yeah. Now, nothing against Coles because, you know, he's doing a job. And look, I didn't think the play was that great, but okay. But really, <laughs> you're sending two guys and one's the ball boy? What does this say about your organization? And well, you got to have ball boys at the All Star game. I mean, I, guess I you know, but, them but are we celebrating this now? Or is this is this because Paredes is your only guy? And quite frankly, Steve, I'm wondering. 
like when the vote was taken, Paredes was hitting or may have been hitting three hundred. He's down probably around two seventy five. Well, he wasn't so. voted in. He was picked as a reserve. He, he was picked as a reserve, so he didn't get enough votes. Fifteen home runs, right? Fifty RBIs. Okay, good first half. But I don't think the Rays would have an All Star unless for the rule that you have to have at least one. Am I wrong about that? Like if you're just going on, I think you could find better third baseman. Well, that's the thing. I mean, He's a liability a month, a month wherever ago, you play him. A month him. ago, he was he would have been an obvious all star, right? He struggled in June. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you didn't have that rule that every team had to have an all star, would the Rays have one? They year? would have a ball boy. <laughs> well, that would be well, at least it. someone would be there. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. If not for Coles, then who? Um, I don't know. I'd like to know the story. I don't know how they get these clubhouse attendants. I guess you apply for it like anything else, right? And you have to have played a little little ball maybe to protect those guys in the bully. But, uh, hey, two All-Stars from in a raised uniform that's uh, going to be in the All-Star game. So you know. Speaking of All-Star break, hmm? you and I will be on vacation next week. What? I thought I was on vacation now. <laughs> well, you are from writing, but we're actually going to be on vacation from the podcast next week, too. Oh, oh, is it a vacation? Yeah, well, I guess it is. Except for you people, you freaking people, we're going to work ahead mm-hmm. so you can have the usual great programming that uh, that you are used to. Yes. Even but, though we're away. But I bring it up because we want to answer some mailbag questions next Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Please send those in. You can email them mm-hmm. to rstroudatampabay.com. Yes, sir. You can go on X or Twitter, whichever you prefer to call it, mm-hmm. at Sports Day TV or mm-hmm. at NFL Stroud, yep. and send your questions in. And we're going to, uh, we've already actually recorded a few of the shows for next week. Yeah. We'll have Dave Mishkin on for a couple shows. Oh, he's, he's great. And he's written a book, um, mm-hmm. which is terrific that, that everyone has to hear about and read. Yep called Blind Squirrel. We'll talk about that. And, of course, anything going on with the Lightning this offseason? Holy cow. No, not really. I mean, it was pretty pretty boring <laughs> offseason. Jeez. So, but we'll go through all those changes with him. Yeah. We're going to do some Bucks previews next week. Yes. We're getting ready for training at camp. I hate to say it because it means I'm going back to work. Yeah. But Well, that's why we're taking next week off to rest up for training camp. Yes. At least we'll have a full week where we won't be doing this uh, late at night, and and otherwise yep. we'll have those shows ready for you to go and pop those in. We've already got uh, a mailbag or two mm-hmm. that has come in, um, but, but we're looking for more. Here. So please send those. Yes, in. Yes, send them in because we got time, and we'll have those for you next week. And um, we still got weeks of shows to go. The Yankees and the Rays still have a game to play and see if the the Rays can win this series. Then it's home against the Cleveland Guardians, then on the road against the Yankees before the All-Star break. So, Well, that's after the, the All-Star break. After right. the All-Star break, right after, right. So, uh, yeah, we're almost getting to that point where uh, I'll get calls from the editor asking if I have anything because the, I the, I think the deadest time in sports, isn't that when they do, they do the ESPYs? The ESPYs, yeah, the ESPYs. And- yeah, it's about the only time in sports coming up around the All-Star break or just the days after it, right? There's one or two days right after mm-hmm. that – Nothing is happening, right? NHL yep. is in the off season. The NBA is in the off season. Football is just about ready to go to training camp, and baseball is on its all star break. And so that's yep. the time when you can get them all together for this wonderful program that yep. ESPN created for themselves called the ESPYS. MLS has some games on the Wednesday after the All Star game, so yeah, they have the Wednesday night's a typical night for them to play right. throughout the season. So they've got games which helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I can remember, you know, years ago, uh, the Bucks Super Bowl teams, especially in 02, going to those things and getting team of the year, you know, different mm-hmm. team of the year nominees. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of categories obviously created for TV. But, um, yeah, that's that's much watched programming. But pretty much not a lot going on. And so we thought it would be a good week to sneak away but still provide you with the outstanding programming that you're used to so be sure you listen to that and get your mailback questions in we have to Appreciate- do, we have to give the uh, tampa bay community their show prep show prep tampa bay that's that's what we call ourselves uh all the time so uh yeah do that with the mailbag and uh we'll see how the rays and the yankees fare tomorrow thanks for listening as always for steve burstick i'm extra the tempe times have a great day everybody